First of all, that, I mean, you look at it, uh, that's a very dangerous um, play. Uh, and I guarantee you that if it was me, I would have probably been ejected uh, from the game, uh, which, you know, has happened in the past with me getting uh, flagrant fouls uh, really for nothing. When you compare that to uh, the one that I got, which I thought I didn't really, I didn't hit him. Uh, I didn't elbow him. I might have touched him, but I don't think he he deserved the flagrant. Uh, I mean, if you're going to compare those two, uh, those are tough plays. And I just thought, uh, you know, should have been a flagrant too. So welcome back to The Jump. I'm Rachel Nichols, still joined by Matt Barnes, Paul Pierce. And guys, that was Joel Embiid talking about LeBron's hard foul on him last night in comparison to his foul on Anthony Davis. Paul, do you think Joel has a point? You know what, Rach? <clears throat> I come from a different era. To me, that wasn't even that flagrant. <laughs> I mean, I thought LeBron right. really, really put his arms out to prevent him from getting dunked on. It, it wasn't like, it, I thought Joel just kind of fell bad. And since he fell right on his back, it made it look worse than it really was. So I, in my eyes, in my era, that's not even a flagrant. And so I... I don't know, but it's a different league today. And, you know, if you fall hard or you yell or you put your hand over your eye, it's a flagrant these days. No, I, 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 I completely know. agree. And I've had, my, I've had my fair share of flagrants and flagrant twos. And to me, when you guys said hard foul, I didn't even think it was a hard foul. I think the situation was that Embiid was just off balance. And like I said, LeBron didn't do yeah. a full push motion. He just put his hands out to kind of embrace himself because he knew he was about to get dunked on, but Embiid was off balance. So, you know, a flagrant foul yeah. in today's game, I understand, but definitely not a flagrant two by any means. Yeah, it's interesting. Doc no, Rivers, absolutely. your old coach, Paul, uh, agreed with you. He said, first of all, LeBron is not a dirty player, according to Doc. And he also no. said it was just a physical play. Doc said they had to call it a flagrant. But he said all the flagrants tonight, and that includes Embiid's, by the way. Doc said you get a flagrant for anything these days, basically. It was just, you know, to his point, it was sort of the same thing as yours, saying, hey, back in the day, we just called those hard fouls. I think one of the things right. that frustrated Regular Joel... Fouls was the sort of discrepancy, right? So he gets called for that yeah. call on AD and he sort of feels like, well, okay, what happened here was worse or just as bad or anything like that. But it is true. It's a different game, gentlemen, than when you guys were in your prime. I'm just saying that. Uh, I want to stick with this game, though, and focus on the Sixers. Paul, what did you learn about Philadelphia after that win over the Lakers? You know what, Rachel, truthfully, I haven't learned much. And, and, and this is why, because yes, they've gotten better because I think they've gotten better coaching. And I think I think MB came back a better player. But in, for, in order for this team to take the next left, next step, and I mean serious contention, I believe that Ben Simmons, he has to get better. He has to be a better player for them. Since his rookie year, I don't think he's ev elevated his game to superstar status because you remember we said this guy could be the next LeBron. We looked at his build, his athletic ability, the way he passed the ball, but he just never took his game to that next level since rookie year. Yeah, they'll be better because they have better coaching, better discipline, but I didn't learn much. You learn more about teams once they get in the playoffs because right now, I think the Celtics don't sweep them. The Sixers win maybe two games. That's probably what I learned. Mm. Still early in the season, so it's hard to really tell, uh, you know, what a team is about. But I, what I do love is I feel like Doc has empowered these guys and have them believing in themselves. And I agree with Paul to an extent. I think, you know, I, we haven't seen the jump from Ben that we thought we were going to see after, you know, first couple great seasons. But we see Embiid playing at an all-star level. You know, Ben Simmons is right around that triple-double. But to me, if Tobias Harris can be this consistent guy that he's been of late, you know, he had a great season with Doc in, 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 in L.A., and now he's out there playing very confident. And they always needed someone to fill that Jimmy Butler role. Although Jimmy wasn't there long, he was the guy down the stretch that made plays for everyone else and hit big shots. And Tobias is that talented, and he's the highest paid player on that team. So Tobias has had a great season. I think Doc, Doc has empowered him. And if he could be their go-to guy at the end to be able to hit big shots, I think Philly's going to be all right. Yeah, I mean, that is a huge difference for them. 
And what Doc has done is kind of doubled down on what he thinks his guys are good at. So he has definitely told Joel, we're giving you the keys. You are going to be the main right. guy our franchise is built around. But he has also said to Ben, I'm not going to try to turn you into something you're not. He's really emphasized what Ben's right. strengths are. Ben is great around the Ooh, basket. You. And defensively, man, they if you took him off this team, the, they would be an entire different defensive presence. So what Doc is trying to do is say, hey, do what you're good at. Do that to the best of your ability. We won't try to ask you to do too many other things. And Tobias's game picking back up obviously helps him with that. I'm interested in this Philly team, but the East, man, the East is hopping. The Nets going on, the Bucks still presence, strong. right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, Celtics want to make a statement, Philadelphia. And then you've got the defending Eastern Conference champions, the Miami Heat, which we will get to later in the show. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.